Uh, I'm going to talk about drawing maps with OpenGL. Um, my name is Lauren, and I work at Mapbox. So we released Mapbox GL this summer, first as GL Native, uh, which is written in C++ for native devices. And then we released Mapbox GLJS about a month ago uh, for the web. So OpenGL is um, an open source, low-level graphics API that's been around for about 22 years. So at this point, it has pretty good hardware and software render support. And more recently, um, WebGL has pretty excellent cross-browser support. Uh, native or Mobile Safari is adding support, I think, with iOS 8, too. Hit control, hit command shift F. Uh, cool, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all the OCD guys in the audience are like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, but so traditionally, web maps has been done with CPU based rendering, which there's a lot of good reasons to do CPU based rendering. I mean, it does a lot of great things, but a lot of web mapping is moving increasingly towards GPU-based rendering. Um, and it, it has some limitations still, but ultimately, drawing in the GPU is just faster. And it allows for some really cool things like continuous zoom or like uh, arbitrary map rotation. Um, and it also allows access to native hardware acceleration. But out of the box, uh, OpenGL only draws lines and triangles, and for maps, we need a lot more than lines and triangles. So uh, basically, we want to draw a map. Um, we need lines, polygons, icons, and text ultimately. So those are kind of the primitives that make up uh, what we know as maps. So drawing lines, like I said, uh, OpenGL actually draws lines and triangles. So lines should ostensibly be the easiest thing to draw. But it turns out that uh, lines has, or G OpenGL has a command called GL lines, but this is what GL lines look like. So they're not anti-alias, they don't support miter joins, um, they often only support integer widths on many devices, and on some devices, they don't support widths greater than 10 pixels. So if you've ever seen like good looking maps, they don't look like this. Uh, so we need to figure out a different way to draw. My maps look like this. <laughs> That's okay. So we have to figure out a different way to draw lines. And the way we do that in Mapbox GL is by using triangles. Like I said, the other thing that OpenGL draws is triangles. So basically, this is what a line looks like in uh, Mapbox GL. Um, so it's made up of six triangles in this case. So the innermost two triangles uh, make up a quad that is the width of the specified width of a line. And so basically, you pass those two through Mapbox GL shader or through OpenGL shaders and they're gonna shade the uh, inside of the line. And now we can do arbitrary width lines, um, and they can be smoothly scaling, but then to make anti-alias lines, we also have to draw these two more quads on the outside um, that form like kind of these, basically these gradients here. So uh, those basically pass in alpha values to the two vertices on the inside of those quads, that's one, and alpha values on the outside, that's zero, and then, um, OpenGL does free linear interpolation, so then you can just interpolate between those alpha values to draw basically opacity gradients, and that's how you get a nice anti-alias line. Um, and another thing we need for map for drawing lines on maps is nice joins, so round joins, bevel joins, and miter joins. Um, and I'm not going to go into that too much today, but it's a similar process of figuring out how to draw those geometries using just triangles. And there's an awesome blog post on the Mapbox blog by my colleague Constantine that you should definitely check out if you're interested. Um, so another thing we need to be able to draw on a map is text, which is super important. Um, and we need text at arbitrary rotations for curved labels. Um, and we also need uh, text halos, which is pretty distinctive to web mapping, but super important if we want to draw text over anything. So if you look into rasterizing text, one of the really common things to use is FreeType, which is kind of the go-to open source library um, for rendering text. Um, and basically what FreeType does is it uh, creates a glyph atlas of all the glyphs that you might need to use in your map. So it's gonna look kind of like this. And once again, instead of, because we're using GL, we need to use triangles. So it's basically gonna break up each glyph into two triangles and figure out how to draw that glyph. Um, and it does a pretty good job of this. Uh, it, it's essentially copying a bitmap re representation onto your map. So you're copying it pixel by pixel from the glyph atlas onto the map, and that's fine for a little while, but then as soon as you start rotating map, it becomes pretty blurry, um, because using OpenGL's linear interpolation, like I said, it's free, but it's not the best when it comes to something as precise as a glyph, so it doesn't render a very nice text. Um, we could also re-request a glyph every time we rotate the map from 
free type, but that's going to become pretty expensive and it slows down our map a lot. So we had to find some alternative. So instead of using free type, uh, there's a paper from Valve Software on sign distance fields that we looked into. And sign distance fields, basically, instead of using a bitmap representation of the glyph, um, it makes something looks like this. And this looks really blurry, but it's actually not a pixel blur. It's actually um, where each of those values represents the distance from that point to the outside of a given glyph. So at that point, um, basically everything that should be rendered inside the glyph has a negative value, and everything that should be rendered outside the glyph has a positive value. Um, and using uh, OpenGL's free linear interpolation, again, we can inter interpolate it and scale these up. So we can have glyphs that are pretty small and then scale them up nicely and end up drawing really nice looking glyphs. Um, and we actually added another uh, um, optimization, which was to um, step all those values instead of doing uh, above or below zero, we changed it from, from zero to 191 and then 192 to 255. So then essentially we're mapping these color values um, to whether or not a glyph should be rendered. And the cool thing is that using this, we can also uh, render text halos for free that are pretty accurate because we just changed the threshold. Uh, like I said, instead of doing 191, we'll just change the threshold to something lower, and that way we can render it basically just like fatter text, and that'll create pretty great uh, text halos. And doing this actually ends up producing really nice scaling, uh, really easy to rotate text. Um, and this is what a glyph atlas looks like in uh, using SDFs. Um, there's some other interesting things about rendering text in OpenGL, like uh, label placement and context-sensitive text replacement. And there's a couple of good blog posts, again, on the Mapbox blog by, by my colleague Ansys about uh, other parts of rendering text in OpenGL. Is that the matrix? Sorry? <laughs> the matrix. <laughs> it's the matrix secret, yeah. It's not, it has nothing to do with GL, it just looks cool. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so another thing we have to be able to draw for maps is polygons. And uh, polygons, again, is going to be a pretty simpler, similar process to how we're drawing lines, where we basically just have to figure out how to draw a polygon using triangles. Um, and we did this in Mapbox GL Native, and it was working quite well, actually, where we tessellate a polygon into triangles. Um, but in JavaScript, our, any of the libraries that are out there were kind of too slow. Um, so instead, we use this trick called the, using a stencil buffer, which basically creates a secondary buffer of a map, um, or just, sorry, just a secondary buffer, and then you can draw the shape and fill in everything, and then just copy part of the buffer back to the screen. But that's actually kind of expensive, because you're copying this buffer back and forth, and it uses more memory than we really need. So. Um, we wanted to also bring it kind of back on parity with native, and also GL is just better at drawing triangles than it is at doing things like copying stencil buffers. So actually, Vlad, as you know, is really into like small code and um, <laughs> was not happy with all these libraries that are already out there. And so he wrote his own implementation of something called Seidel's randomized triangulation algorithm that will uh, basically tessellate a, a polygon uh, into all these triangles. And th this is how we draw them with. Uh, Mapbox GL, and so uh, his library is also open source now. It's Mapbox. It's at GitHub slash Mapbox slash Seidel if you want to look at that. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, so a couple other interesting things, aside from the basic map primitives that we wanted to be able to do, uh, we wanted to be able to draw blurred layers. Um, and so we want to be able to blur like anything together, not just lines or, you know. So what we ended up doing was looking into pre-rendering. So instead of uh, drawing a layer and then blurring it, what we ended up doing is using a render buffer, which is like a secondary off-screen buffer that you're going to draw layers to. So for something like hill shades, um, which I can show you in a minute. Uh, I don't have the slide in here, but we can draw multiple layers to a render buffer and then apply a Gaussian blur over those uh, over the whole layer, and then um, render that layer to the screen. And the cool thing about drawing blurs in pre-rendered layers is that we can actually draw them smaller than they actually need to be on the map, and then using uh, OpenGL's free linear interpolation, we can scale them up, and because they're blurred, it actually looks pretty great. And that way it's faster than rendering blurs to entire like full-size layers. Um, another cool thing is a lot of people are kind of wondering uh, 
about like older machines, like you know, maybe your machine doesn't support WebGL or maybe your, your browser doesn't support GL. So there's, we're kind of working on something experimental uh, using node bindings to render headless uh, Mapbox GL native on the server and then save those tiles um, and serve them to uh, devices or browsers that don't support GL as kind of a fallback. But that's, like I said, still experimental. Um, and we're working on also creating a style editor that'll make it easier to edit its styles, because now that everyone's used to Cardo CSS, we're doing something totally different. Um, so, so hopefully that'll make it easier. Um, but yeah, so, any questions? Let's get more of that. Right, we need IEA compatibility for the federal government, which is the backbone of GIS. <laughs> Question in the back. Hi, I'm Laura. And can you speak a little bit about it? Sure, sorry. Back here. Yep. Um, so we're uh, tangling both CDM um, and WGL and um, actually having issues with newer maps, like brand new back there and out the And I'm wondering if you could give a little more insight on those algorithms and fine tuning that. And is there any one solution that actually works on every platform? We're not even talking browser differences. We're talking like literally brand new, just bought it last week, MacBook Airs that show snow. And we'll talk about this more later today because we're going to talk, but I'm just curious. I think that's a hardware question that is just way beyond what I understand about GL, to be honest. Um, I don't. I don't really know so much about like the internals of devices in OpenGL, but. And, and you said you guys are doing the cesium talk yeah. this afternoon. After the cesium talk. Oh, okay. We have a cesium talk. Yeah, we're right after. That. Oh, okay. Awesome. But if you have, like, cool bugs, <laughs> if you start working with Mapbox GL and you have cool bugs that you find in various devices, you should totally send them to us and we'll try to look at it. Make more triangles. Make more triangles. Always more triangles. Steve? I'm going to save my, I have another question, which you know what it is. But this question is, uh, how, so if I'm a leaflet developer, yeah. how do I find out about the leaflet and the leaflet and the leaflet and how easy is it to take some of the map box? I know, so you, you showed a demo of the pin that said web, uh, leaflet GL works. Yeah. But how easy is it to combine all this new hotness with the simple? Um, that's actually a question that Vlad might be good at because he's also actually developing like leaflet for map box GL. Uh, right? Kind of. Yeah, we have another colleague who just started actually, who uh, did something, some experiment combining DOM elements for to make like 100 markers on a map, uh, using just like getting the position of a pixel on the map on the screen, and it worked pretty well. But that's, it's kind of a hack, but uh, yeah, it's still pretty new. So, uh, question down front. So, like what 18 months ago, we were at uh, we were at JSU before, and like the world was like OpenGL and everything, and our minds were literally blown by some of the stuff that was shown. Like, how hard is this to actually implement? I mean, because we've been talking about it for a while. It's been sort of, you know, like, like beyond sort of, you know, the federal few states is not that mistake, but like, how hard is it to, like, <laughs> to really develop a full application, not just a simple map, a full application of what we do? Um, I would say, one, it depends on what your application is. Uh, but also, I don't know what you mean by how hard is it. So Mapbox GL started in some capacity May of 2013 as kind of an experiment. Um, and I, like I said, we released Native uh, in May, I believe, May or June, and then 
JS and August, which are basically two different renderers that do the same thing. Um, I don't know how to answer how hard is it. But. I mean, like, so, so you have, like, building an application that uses much? Yeah, I mean, like, so we have, like, a, like a leaflet application, right, or open layers application, web app application, right? You're going to rip that out and put Mapbox GL in there? Like, how, like, to build the, say, to take your application from 1.0 to 2.0, how much work is that to then rewrite all the web binders and everything like that? Oh, so to use Mapbox GL? Yeah. Um, I mean, is it, like, a whole other, like, is it twice the work? Is it just, is it, you know, Vlad's going to redo it in a little bit less code? Like, how does it work? <laughs> Vlad's well, probably going to redo it in a little less code. I mean, it depends, like I said, on some of the upcoming work, maybe if it's using Leaflet uh, with Leaflet J GL. Um, and it also depends on how complicated your map is, I suppose. It shouldn't be too complicated. The styles, like I said, are pretty different. Um, so I don't know if you've seen Mapbox GL, like JSON. That's pretty different. Um, like I said, we're working on an editor that's going to make, hopefully, restyling the map pretty much easier. and has, like, a nice UI instead of just a code editor. Um, but so... It's not like a one-step shop, but uh, it'll kind of free your maps and allow it to do a lot of things, so. Right, and, and then the other point is, what is the use case, what is the user experience that we want to create that actually demands this advanced technology? Like a rapidly changing styling of a base map on the fly. And the idea is, with this technology is so on the edge, and yet the majority of our work is, take 100 points and plop them down on some tiles, right? So unless, you know, we're going to the sensor web and huge volumes of dynamic data changing by the second, then this, that some of this technology is the only way you're going to handle that versus all our traditional use cases, we get by well. I mean, it took SDG, what, 15 years to become useful in everyday Deployments, so it, it's it, it's a it's a it's a chicken and the egg problem in, in some level. Question: CSS, CSS versus uh, versus the, the style or Mapbox uh, GL. Um, what are there plans to build some sort of convert that gets you part way there? Um, so we thought about that, but ultimately. Uh, Mapbox GL can do so much more than yeah. Carta CSS. Yeah. So at this point, I think we're not really planning on building a converter. Um, there's like a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, it it it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> we're yeah. radically restyling on the fly in the back. question okay uh, I mean in my opinion not everyone knows like is using GL yet uh, so GL is still its own brave new world a little bit and the things that you can do with that are just pretty endless so um, I think there's a lot of cool things that are gonna happen with GL that people are kind of gonna figure out um, I'm actually gonna show you this is the editor that I mentioned that's still like very much under development, so I'm probably not supposed to show it to you. And I'm <laughs> but so like things like this. Right. I'm copying you know, this. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally going to see that. And you can like, you know, your map will change on the fly and you can, I don't know, do all kinds of things. This is what the JSON looks like basically. Um, I also, someone at Mapbox made this pretty cool like storytelling feature here. Uh, using Digital Globe's new imagery, where basically we can like scroll down here, and it uh, and this is using a raster raster tile, tiles, obviously, but just the, like the interactions you can create with uh, GLJS are pretty cool. Wow! Um, there we go. Let's clap that. Out. So, <laughs> all right. So if you're playing JSGO Bingo, story map has been taken, and it's not <laughs> often. Um, I have one criticism of the speakers, not one of you showed hexagon maps. <laughs> that's not hot anymore, yeah, tell me. Um, I, 
that's 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 the same one. Real quick. Does this only work with Mapbox server, or can I use it with other things? Can you use it with other things? You can use it with other things. Okay. I just want to know if it's somehow tied just to use. It. I had to use Mapbox to get this cool stuff. We. It's Mapbox GL, so you can use our library uh, yes. on self-hosted tiles, right? Well, do you need some kind of a key or something like that, right? You need a public key yeah. for Mapbox uh, for yeah. if you're using Mapbox hosted tiles. So if I use another source, you don't need that, right? Gotta pay back the onesies. Buy a few onesies. <laughs> yeah, buy some onesies and we'll call you. Yeah, I heard for free. How about that? Folks, uh, let's give Martin one final round of applause.